Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got a really interesting video for you today because recently I reviewed AMD's fabulous Ryzen 9 7950X and while the performance at stock speed is absolutely fantastic, something that really wowed me was its performance in its eco mode. So this is when you limit the power uh, or the TDP to 65 watts or 105 watts and here even at 65 watts, it was outperforming the likes of the Ryzen 9 5950X and the Core i9-12900K with massively reduced power consumption and thermals. This got me thinking, what if you applied those eco modes but then used a low profile air cooler such as Noctua's L9A, which we just happen to have here, and then put that in a mini ITX case? Could you call this CPU at that eco mode with a very, very small cooler? That obviously opens up a huge potential for using this CPU in very, very small cases. And this, I know, is something that a lot of you out there will be interested in because we, as Mini ITX fans, already tinker with the Curve Optimizer on AMD CPUs. We already undervolt them. So, yeah, very, very interesting test. First, though, a word from our sponsors. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get some great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. Even better news is that I have a discount code to share with you guys that will get you even more money off this software. So Microsoft Windows 10 Pro, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11 if you want to do that. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, Click apply and the UK price, for example, will drop from £17 all the way down to just £12.76 and you'll see similar discounts elsewhere in other currencies as well. Once purchased, you'll want to head to your order page and copy the Windows 10 Pro key shown at the bottom of the page. When you're in Windows, you want to move your mouse over to the start button, right click, go to settings, then update and security, and then move up to activation and Finally, click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. Finally, you can do exactly the same thing with Office 2021 Professional by clicking the buy button using code CR25 again, click apply, and you'll get a hefty discount on Office as well. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring this video, and you can see a whole bunch more links and discounts in the description below. So yeah, we're gonna be tapping into those eco modes, 65 watts and 105 watts, which will be available soon as one-click options in Ryzen Master or in your motherboard's BIOS if they are not already with the latest BIOS versions. And we are gonna be seeing how it performs with this cooler in a Liani Q58. So this is one of my favorite mini ITX cases. It's kind of geared towards both air cooling with its vented side panels as well as liquid cooling. Obviously there are smaller cases out there that you might wanna consider the uh, Noctua cooler um, as a better match for, but this is still a valid comparison because you've got those vented side panels just like you would in smaller cases. So a really, really interesting test here today. It's probably not something that many people will want to do. After all, you are going to be reducing the performance quite a bit of the 7950X or other CPUs such as the 7900X quite significantly, but it's still going to be one of the fastest mainstream desktop CPUs out there, even if you limit the TDP to 65 watts. So really, really interesting test here today. And of course, if you like mini ITX uh, systems, content, all that kind of thing, you definitely want to subscribe to my channel because I've got a lot more stuff coming as well as having lots of other really cool videos as well. So don't forget to check out my previous stuff, like, comment, and subscribe, and do comment. I love hearing about your mini ITX systems that you've got at home and what you think about the testing and this video here today. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's crack on.
So here we have the Ryzen 9 7950X at stock speed. And as we can see, we've still got some relatively high boosting going on. We've got 5.7 gigahertz showing in this uh, screen grab, but the temperatures didn't really go much below 65 degrees C. In fact, they were usually in the 70s or 80s, even at stock speed, just with background tasks going on. So things very, very toasty to start with, but you do see some relatively high boosting going on, at least on one or two cores. So what we're going to do here is just run the multi-core test in Cinebench and take a look at things. And as we can see, instantly up to 95 degrees C and those frequencies coming down dramatically, starting off at about 5, then dropping down to 5.9, 5.8, 5.7. We're now firmly down in the low 5.7s. Even uh, maximum, we're now under 5.7 gigahertz. And the final score is 33,149. So if we just plumb in a, uh, another test here and we'll see what happens. Again, that CPU temperature not really dropping much below 85 degrees C, straight up again to 95 degrees C. And uh, we're now falling down below 4.6 gigahertz on the all core frequency, uh, even lower than that on some of the cores. And uh, we're just waiting for the final result now, 5.4.5 gigahertz maximum and dipping a little bit below that on occasions as well. So the score has already dropped to three, uh, sorry, 31,800 points. So we're just going to try and run another one to get a third result and see where we're at. The maximum CPU frequencies then already below 4.5 gigahertz. So we're a good five, 600 megahertz down where the CPU should usually be rocking along in uh, multi-threaded workloads, probably a bit more than that. And uh, we're now dropping down to the uh, low 4.4 gigahertz range. So going to see a lower score here, 3,100, uh, sorry, 31,175. And we'll just uh, throw another one in here uh, just to see what happens. And those um, CPU frequencies, dropping down now below 4.4 gigahertz regularly. So it's clear that if you're going to be running a multi-threaded test that lasts more than 30 seconds to a minute, those CPU temperatures are really, really going to take uh, take their toll on the boosting frequencies. So as we can see here, the uh, score just keeps on tumbling. We're now below 31,000 and we've got 30,700 points on there. Just one more, just to see what happens. And uh, CPU boosting pretty much never going above 4.4 gigahertz now, um, 4.2 gigahertz down at the uh, bottom of the stack. So probably looking at an even lower score here and all the time the CPU cooler is kind of screaming away. Uh, 95 degrees C on the CPU temperature and it has been since the very start. Obviously that's kind of what you'd expect with a Ryzen 7000 series CPU and 30,500 points. So that's where we ended up. So here we are in the 65 watt eco mode then, and as we saw at the start, the CPU boosting was actually getting up to 5.5 gigahertz. So that's actually not that reasonable. I think I actually might've even seen a 5.6 uh, gigahertz frequency there. So despite the fact that we're reducing the frequency, or sorry, the TDP down to just 65 watts, we're still getting some fairly high boosting. Now, what isn't so high is the all core boosting. We're not getting anywhere above four gigahertz, unfortunately, but just look at those temperatures. We are only at 71 degrees with all cores under load in Cinebench. So that really proves the point that this cooler can cope with this CPU if you can knock it down in eco mode. A score of 27,400 points. That is pretty much the same as what you'd see from a Core i9-12900K with uh, a, a decent cooling solution. So if you're not thermally throttling that CPU, then uh, that is pretty much similar to limiting the 7950X to just 65 watts in eco mode. Obviously, if you dropped a 12900K into a similar system to this one with a tiny processor cooler, you're going to be getting a, a much lower result than that uh, because it will be thermally throttling. So score not really dipping down that much, maybe 100 points or so, but those temperatures staying around 75 degree C under load. And once again, we're seeing some pretty high boosting um, across 
individual cores here, 5.4, 5.5 gigahertz. So you're probably not, not going to be losing that much in single threaded performance. It's just on the multi threaded performance, but it's still matching or bettering the Core i9 12900K and of course doing much better than the Ryzen 9 5950X, which is its predecessor. So here we have the 105 watt eco mode, which is plumbed into the BIOS using settings you can see in the description below because it's not available as a flick switch option yet. Now the temperatures a bit higher than we've seen with the 65 watt eco mode, the, temp the CPU temperature hitting 95 degrees C relatively quickly, but not quite as quickly or as high as the stock speed mode. Also, we've got some fairly low CPU frequency results, but if we look at the score, 33,752, that's actually higher than the CPU ran at stock speed. So the fact that we're kind of reining in the power and thermals a bit is allowing it maybe to boost a little higher. We're also seeing some decent boosting uh, across one or two cores as, uh, at this setting as well. The uh, boosting frequencies in the second test, again, we're seeing some pretty high temperatures. The boosting frequencies dropping a little bit to about 4.6, 4.7. Again, not as much as they did with the in stock speed. And we've got here, again, staying above 33,000 points for the second test, which it didn't do at stock speed. So we are seeing faster results here uh, with the Noctua L9A if we are at the 105 watt eco mode. So temperatures though are good 20 degrees above the 65 watt eco mode. So if you want to run it uh, at a cooler option, you have the 65 watt eco mode to play with as well. And um, just running the final test here, CPU frequency is still sticking fairly high and we have a result of 32,473. And if we just go back and uh, I'm just gonna go back and see what the third result was for the, um, the stock speed CPU. Well, it was basically after a few runs, it was about 30 and a half thousand. So the final result here in eco mode, 32,000, you're looking at 2,000 points higher than what we have for the stock speed results. So this is a clear indicator that the both the 65 watt and the 105 watt modes are much, much better with a low profile cooler than they are than it is at stock speed. So we have some pretty interesting numbers then, don't we? First of all, at the 65 watt eco mode, we saw thermals that were perfectly acceptable. We were looking at about 75 degrees C under full load in Cinebench, and that's despite using a tiny low profile cooler such as the Noctua L9A. So if you have this CPU and you want to put it into a very, very small case, you can cool it with a low profile cooler if you put it into that 65 watt eco mode and that's just the standard one that you can apply in Ryzen Master or use those settings in the BIOS. Now what that means as I said is you can use that in a very very small case and you will be using a low profile cooler to get similar or better performance to the Core i9-12900K and much much better performance than the Ryzen 9 5950X and that's quite an achievement really. What you also need to be aware of is that the Core i9-12900K that I had in the graph that I showed earlier was under custom liquid cooling. So it had no thermal throttling going on at all, but if you put it into a similar system such as this, there would almost certainly be thermal throttling going on. So even though the 7950X in its 65 watt eco mode only managed to match that result for the 12900K, you would not get that same result for the, for the Intel CPU in this case. It would be a lot lower because itself would be thermally throttling. So that's even more of a reason to consider the 65 watt eco mode. You're gonna be dealing with some compromises here as you will do if you undervolt and uh, those kind of things, curve optimizer as well maybe. But the plus side is you're still getting incredibly fast performance but in a system such as this you don't need a liquid cooler or anything like that even a tiny cpu cooler such as the l9a can actually cope with it in 65 watt eco mode which is great news now stepping things up to the 105 watt eco mode which you can see the settings for below they were passed uh, to me in the amd review pack when I reviewed the 7950X and you can see my review to the 7950X in a banner up above or in a link in the description below if you wanna have a look at, uh, look at it in a bit more detail. 
at 105 watts, we are seeing results that are faster than the CPU can manage at stock speed. So I can only imagine what's actually going on there is that those thermals are kind of in a sweet spot, which is allowing slightly higher boosting under multi-threaded workloads, and that is resulting in the higher performance, even though the TDP is significantly constrained compared to the stock speed TDP of, what is it, 170 watts or something. So even though we're reducing that maximum power draw by 70, 65, 70 watts, we are actually seeing higher performance in this situation because we're dealing with a cooler running processor. So that was super, super interesting. And the result, I believe, was about 32, 33,000 uh, points in Cinebench. And pretty much every single step that I did in those three or four runs was faster than those equivalent runs at with the CPU at stock speed. So that's pretty interesting as well. My own personal favorite, well, you're already dealing with a really, really fast CPU here. I would be tempted to maybe opt for the 65 watt mode, especially as those uh, lightly threaded tasks are still gonna benefit from fairly high boosting. As we saw, it was still reaching about 5.5, 5.6 gigahertz in all three tests. So at stock speed at 65 watts and at 105 watts, we were still seeing boosting well above 5.3, 5.4 gigahertz, which is great news. So for me, yeah, it'd definitely be a toss up between the 65 watt and the 105 watts. I think if you're mission critical and you need maximum multi-threaded performance, I would opt for the 105 watt mode. Also seem to give slightly higher single threaded uh, or single core boost uh, boosting as well. So. Uh, but obviously, if you want to see your CPU run a lot cooler than the 95 degrees that is pretty much seems standard for Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, the 65 watt eco mode still gives you fantastic performance, but with much lower power consumption and significantly lower thermals, which is going to be really beneficial for anyone building an air-cooled mini RTX rig. So hopefully you found this an interesting test. And if you've got an AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPU and you want to cool it with a low profile profile system such as this one or low, low profile cooler, should I say, then you would definitely want to check out those eco modes. So that's it from me. I will uh, catch you soon. And don't forget to check out my other videos, like, comment and subscribe as well. I will catch you soon. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.